what we're using the uh, patient participation panel for tomorrow is really to get that across, to deliver some free training to the participants, um, to also make sure that we're um, making sure that they understand the importance of learning basic life support, CPR, and how to use a defibrillator. Some of the questions will be focused around whether they can find a defibrillator in their area. So for example, um, if somebody did have a cardiac arrest on the street, would everyone in that room know where their local and nearest defib is? Would they know that they can call 999 and we can tell them where it is? I'd like to find out um, exactly how educated people are when it comes to CPR and whether they've had training recently. Um, and then also if we can potentially help support communities with free training. The most important thing to the Southwestern Ambulance Service is the patients. And one of um, the things we've identified is that we didn't have an avenue to get the patient voice heard. Um, and what we wanted to achieve was very much a you said, we did attitude. So as in we collect the patient's feedback We've listened to the patients um, and then we implement positive changes um, based on their feedback. Um, so the reason the panels are important um, is largely because without the panel, there's no direct way of getting an unbiased and honest opinion from the patients. It, get, it means that we can put everybody in the same room, we can ask them the same questions and we can get varying responses um, all at once rather than going through surveys, etc. Um, what we've noticed is obviously there is a, a massive um, decline in face-to-face -face events and the trust uh, themselves have also stopped attending face-to-face -face events to, um, you know, promote positive COVID restriction um, and make sure that we're, you know, we're operationally as um, being fully utilised as possible. Um, so we haven't had any way of engaging with patients face-to-face um, -face really, um, or even I would I'd maybe argue at all, um, other than to singularly contact people over Teams or Skype. So the patient participation panel coming in throughout COVID, which is, it was only, it's only just been started, has meant that we've been able to still have that engagement, still um, encourage patient feedback, um, but we haven't had to put anyone at risk and we haven't had to affect our operational demands either to help the patients and, you know, vice versa, because they've got a lot of information that we need to, you know, engage effectively. What really focused on is that the panel is for patients by patients and we don't want it to be taken over um, by employees such as myself, um, governors who um, are already in the system, um, but also we have quite a lot of um, health authorities, so health watch and um, clinical commissioning groups that join us as well. But again, they're there to observe because we don't want them to um, effectively rule the way the conversation goes or steer it in a certain way. We just want the patients to give us their opinion. And, um, and also when I'm saying patients, uh, very clearly, I'd, I'd like to get across that it's members of the public, patients and potential patients. Not everyone that is in the panel is a patient, but um, for ease, I say patients, but yeah.